What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? I'd say so. I'd say that just finding more more time to study, working 40 hours a week has some of its drawbacks because you can you can only put so much quality time in to the point that you are either just doing yourself a disservice of studying. You could study more, but it's probably not going to be good quality. <laughs> um, and I, I I'm trying to space out my day even just to wake up a little bit earlier but it, so far it's not it's not happening because i mean i work from eight to five and then i go to straight to class right afterwards so it's like i kind of want to sleep <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i can certainly understand that what about your weekends what do those look like oh it's it's i, I jam pack those um uh, this past weekend i actually had a group from our our class classes take uh lsat 56 in a simulation of 35 minutes per section we took the test and then we uh, within normal kind of time constraints and then we came back um later that day and we only got to thoroughly redo the logic game section because it took us three hours <laughs> we went through every single game and proved why the right answer was right and everything else is wrong. So it was, it was really good review and everyone learned something because we, we didn't move on until everyone could say, yeah, I get it. That's the work. Yeah, I mean, review can be incredibly time consuming, but oh yeah, it, it is. it's the most valuable thing you can do. So I'm not surprised to hear that it took a long time. I'm glad that it took a long time. and. I'm glad that you had this group from the students in the course to be able to connect with each other outside of class and take in that direction if that's the direction that serves everyone. So that's awesome. Yeah. We were going to try to do the other two sections um, yesterday, but I just couldn't do it. I had, I had some plans. And so um, I wrote down all my reasonings in a Word doc and hopefully it helped them for reference. Awesome. That's fantastic. So on your weekends, um, how many hours are you typically studying? Uh, I would say six to eight per day. Um, I try to give myself a day off because if I do seven days a week, I'm always, I'm positive I'm going to crash and burn. Um, we had created a group me for LSAT takers who were going to take the test after April. And I remember saying that I'm, I'm treating this ration like how I was treating my races back in college. Um, simulating the environment, but also you can't work out back to back to back. Your body's going to give out. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for sure. I see. I see all those those race. Of, they're all the race paraphernalia behind you on the wall. Is that something yeah. you do a lot? Oh yeah, it was. It was um, a big part of college and high school. The only, the only, I only wish that law schools let me run <laughs> during school <laughs> so they could pay for it. Right. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of discipline, a tremendous amount of training. And you also know that, of course, you need time away. You need rest days as well. You can't do... What kind of races would you typically run? Long distance. So the patient ones. Yeah. 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 For sure. I mean, if you're training for a half or full marathon, I mean, you can't do several training runs of that late, of that Mm -hmm. length in the final month prior, right? You got to space them out and take days off in between. Yep. Yep. Specifically the mile. And I treat it like the way you run a mile is you run it in four ways. Um, The first with your head, the second with your legs, the third with your stamina and the fourth with your heart. So it was just like, you get out what you you put in basically. And it's the same premise as you in the LSA. You get out what you put in, you put in the work more often than not, you'll get something out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you're clearly willing to put in the work. You mean, you have a full-time job, you're attending class in the evenings, and then you're doing the bulk of your studying on the weekend, but six to eight hours in one day is still a lot. So we we try to sparse that out and give myself a break here and there, but I've I've figured out that I'm not going to get the bulk of my studying done during the weekend just because they're doing the week work. So my only other option is weekends. 
Well, there you go. That's great. I mean, eight hours on in one day of LSAT, I think is probably too much for most people. It's, I could imagine it being possible to make it work though. If you were to mix in a study group on, on that day so that you're getting a social element in there as well. Yeah. So what, what you did sounds fantastic. That sounds like a good way to change yeah. it up. So there could be a little bit of chit chat. There could be a little bit of connection. It's not just doing nothing but LSAT problems for eight hours. Oh, no, no. Good. That would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I did have a question regarding, I think I had email you, emailed you about this, and you said it was too um, complicated for email. Um, it was regarding the person could write, it up, write out specific personal statements for specific schools versus just wearing uh, writing out one template and then giving that to all the schools you applied for. Personal statements for each specific schools. Obviously, the the bulk of the essay is going to be saying like adding some personalizations for each school. This is not like oh you're not sending us. It's just a template of what you said to everyone else. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're bringing this question up again. So yeah, I mean. You don't need to personalize it. They don't, they don't care, honestly. They know that you're applying to more than one school and they probably would also recommend, I mean, it's not in their interest to say this, but they would, I think they'd be surprised if you were only applying to one school. So it's, it's almost assumed by default that you're applying to more than one. So personalization is not required for that specific reason. Mm-hmm. It can be nice to tell them why you want their school in particular, but I would probably recommend doing that as a separate essay to give it the attention and focus. And so as to not divide your personal statement into covering so many different things. So a personal statement could often talk about why law school in general in some way, Mm -hmm. but then for why their school in particular, I'd put that in a separate essay. And that way you're also not changing your main personal statement draft so many times and then potentially mixing things up. I think it's probably safer to just make it a separate statement and then give it the focus there. Okay. So... All right. So just write a why so-and-so essay, just a different one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you're given law school, you do some research on the school, you have some specific details about the school, and then you can talk about how those details relate to what kind of law school experience you want to have or what you want to do after law school, things of that nature. But the other thing also I want to add is that personal statement, it's got to be jam-packed, right? You got about two pages, double space, something in that neighborhood. And so to take up valuable space there, talking about their school in particular, when you could put that in a separate essay, why would you take up the space in your main draft? I've fallen into the trap of filling up so much stuff in my personal essay. I think I've, I've put diversity aspects in there and another why this law school in particular. So I, I guess just to cut those out and then just make it more concise would be a better option. Yeah. I mean, the diversity aspects, that could be a separate diversity statement. You don't need to put it all in one essay. Okay. Sweet. That answers my question. Fantastic. What other questions do you have for me today? Um, that's particularly it. Um, well, I, I set up this thing with, where the group me that I'm in, we're, we're going to try to take an LSAT simulation basically every weekend. Do you think that's feasible or you should be able, should, you should be trying to take a practice LSAT every weekend or you think it's just study one week, take an LSAT another week and then just opt out or can you continually take an LSAT or is it okay to take a, an LSAT for practice LSAT every weekend? I guess is my question. It's okay, assuming that you have enough of a foundation to get value out of it. So I imagine that the folks in your study group, I mean, they've all been, you said that they're aiming for after April. So they've got at least approximately what we're speaking now in the very beginning of March, they've got at least three, three and a half months till the June LSAT, right? So I don't know how much studying they've done prior. Do they all have a, I mean, for yourself and others, do they all have a general familiarity with the different sections and the different question types? 
I I don't know how thorough it is. I I I remember in my logical reasoning review that I sent in the group group me that there were some questions that really tested your focus or your know-how of conditional logic. And if you didn't know the thorough understanding of conditional logic, you're probably going to get this answer wrong. Um, it's just that aspect. And then knowing all the other, all the many types of flaws you can get in a question. But I, I, I feel, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I feel like they have a basic understanding of, of everything. Um, some have said that, yeah, I'm not prepared to take uh, a practice LSAT. Yeah, my, by all means, don't take one. But um, I said, I also said, sooner or later, you're going to need to take at least one just to have a feel of it. Because I went, I took a, my first official test in January. And ha having it being my first official test, I just crashed. <laughs> so I feel like what I took out from that, yeah, I did horrible. Even though I was pract practicing pretty, de pretty decently prior to. It's just having the experience of taking that test firsthand and knowing what to expect now is going to be so beneficial for me come either June, August, maybe even September if I bomb June or August. Well, you've got plenty of time between now and June, between now and August. That I see no reason why you would crash and burn or burn out or anything like that or bomb it. I don't see how that should even be a possibility. You've got enough time where you can make anything happen over the next three and a half months between now and June. As for the general question, I mean, a thorough understanding of conditional logic. I think a lot of people who take the LSAT don't really have that. And you can certainly prepare to, to gain that understanding. But taking practice LSATs can give the exposure to some of the nuances of conditionality. If the student's not going to encounter them in isolation, in a separate lesson, for example. I mean, I have tons of lessons covering conditionality, conditional chains, contrapositives, things of that nature. So someone who's lacking that, I'd tell them, watch that video in the course library. I've got it covered <laughs> from many different yeah. angles. But I could also say, well, there's lots of lessons in the course library. Maybe they'll cover something else before taking their practice LSAT. So that's fine. You don't need to have that level of depth to, sit, to benefit from a practice LSAT but I would also want someone to at least know what the contrapositive is and then yeah. the common pitfalls of reversal and negation. Mm -hmm. Like that would be, I think, enough on that particular topic. Ideally, I just want someone to know, okay, well, what's a logic game? What's logical reasoning in general? What's reading comp in general? Maybe know about ordering games and grouping games. Mm -hmm. And some to, ha to have some prior familiarity and exposure. Yeah, But that alone could be enough to do a practice LSAT a week and benefit from it. I just wouldn't want someone who's totally new to it to take a practice test and then get oh, yeah. really discouraged by the results. No, of course not. <laughs> no, that will kill you. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, for anyone, who's, for anyone who's been in the course for a couple of weeks or a month and has attended some of the live classes and watched the foundational videos, I'd feel comfortable telling them, yeah, go ahead and take a practice LSAT a week, but take those results with a big grain of salt, knowing that it does not reflect your ultimate potential, especially oh, yeah. if you're taking the LSAT three and a half months from now. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of time to learn and improve along the way. And the practice LSATs plus review can help you do that. I'm glad you got the study growing. Are you guys going to meet every weekend? Is that kind of the plan? Um, that, that's the, the plan as of now. We, we've done one. Um, we still, I, I think they've already reviewed the logical reasoning se section already. So now we only have the reading comprehension. So I, we're going to try to aim for, to do that Tuesday. But the goal is to take, if you're comfortable, take a practice test every weekend up to the week of test day. Obviously, don't take one during the week of test day. Just give yourself the, the rest period before a race, per se. Um, I would actually disagree then, with that a little bit slightly. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want anyone to take a practice LSAT. Like directly before, yeah. <laughs> the day before. And maybe yeah. not even two days before, depending on how the person feels. But I think in that final week, for a lot of people, it could be helpful. You want to walk into test day itself fresh, but let's say hypothetically your LSAT is on a Saturday. Don't do anything Friday. Take Friday completely off. Maybe don't do anything Thursday either. But doing a practice LSAT on a Tuesday or Wednesday, taking some time to review it, for some folks, that, that could be helpful. The question is, why are you taking it? Yeah. So I, I don't think that rest the entire week before is necessary, but maybe a couple days before, but everyone's got to judge their energy level and what they're looking to get out of it. 
Yeah, for sure. But yep, that's the, that's the plan. So hopefully um, we stick to it. I, personally, I'm, I'm going to try to take one every weekend. And we just use the 24-7 study hour in Kajabi. So that's good. We're just trying to simulate taking it online. So someone's watching you by you're, – you're doing it on Zoom. And then I told people, just do whatever you're planning to do before a natural test. Do your warm-up, drink a cup of coffee, do whatever, and then go to the test day feeling – Oh, this is a natural test. Let's go. You know? <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you got it going. Let me know if there's any way I could support you and your prepper. Yeah, support for sure. The for folks sure. in this study group with that process. I think it's a great thing to be doing. Yeah. It's, it's all from me. Awesome. Uh, I'm little... actually awesome. getting ready for work myself. Perfect. No, I'm, I'm glad we got to connect this morning. I'm glad we got to meet and I'll, I'll see you in class later. Yes, I will. See you later. I have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.